Yeah. To thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the We Want More podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Moore. I'm Asante Morris. I'm Maxwell. And we got Pepsi. He's beside me chewing on a new bone, so hopefully he'll chill out this episode. Um, please be sure to like, subscribe, whatever platform you're listening to this on, whether that be on Apple, Spotify. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to that. And also, if you are listening to us on Apple, Spotify, please scroll down and give us five stars, man. Please, please, that rating would definitely help. And if you got some words for us, leave a review, man. Leave a review. Uh, what else? I guess some show announcements. I'll be in D.C. I'll be in Washington, D.C. on September 24th. That's a Tuesday. Buy tickets September yeah. 24th. Uh, D.C. Um, is that, what was that, like an 8 o'clock show? Just a regular old yeah. matinee? Or is that not a matinee? What is that? <laughs> no, what do you I'm call not. it? What's the 8 o'clock? I don't know. I don't know. But just, That's yeah. prime time. Yeah, 8 yeah. o'clock? That is prime time. I thought I know matinee's early. Yeah. Oh, matinee is early. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if y'all in, if if y'all in DC, I don't know. If y'all in DC, September twenty fourth, man, come through. Whether you in DC, Northern Virginia, somewhere close in Maryland, yeah, pull up, man. It'll be a good time, and I get to work out some of my new hour, and it's coming together. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, it definitely is. You know, I definitely just trying to just trying to make this thing perfect, trying to get it right. But other than that, what's up with you? How you been? I'm good. Um, I don't know. I had more. I was prepared for the question, and I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm cool. I'm like, good. How was your your show in Brooklyn? Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, trying to do a new monthly. Well, I'm not trying. I'm actually, I'm doing it. Monthly show in Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, this one's fun. People come out. People laugh. And it's free. So if you, yeah, if, that's if, the other thing. So if you ain't doing nothing, if you're in the New York area. You know, you could check out Asante. And who who you doing the show with? Uh, you know Christian Mangual. Yeah, he's like somebody I know from Philly. Yeah. He's a comic from Philly. So me and him are doing it. If anybody, if anybody does music, hit me up because I want to have some music there. Oh, that's like a dope. fucking uh, a drummer, keep time or something, or maybe like a uh, a fucking guitarist. Okay. Or a, um, I'm sure you a could pianist. Find, I'm sure you could find all of that in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can find a pianist on a train. <laughs> you look over your shoulder, and pop out, bro. Unexpected. That, that shit is crazy. A whole lot of pianists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely will see a lot of penis. It's crazy, right? I, the first time I seen a nigga playing a piano at the train station, this shit blew my mind, right? And it wasn't that he was even good. It's just like, how the fuck did you get this piano <laughs> to the second platform? <laughs> He probably disassembled it and like, cause you know how they're all like all those musicians in the subway like like Rain Man. Mm-hmm. So he could probably disassemble and reassemble a piano, <laughs> for like ten minutes. The fucking foot pedals off, the strings and all that shit. Or you know, in New York City, if you've watched any movie made in the '30s, they're just dropping pianos out of windows constantly. <laughs> so you know, yeah. you don't have to take it that far. Uh, but yeah, my week has been alright. Well, I don't know. It's been it's been an up and down week. You no know, show's been going good. Been at the cellar most of the week. Tuesday I did a show with um, are you garbage? That was Kat, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Cat Ryan and um H Foley. We did a show at Gramercy Theater. Oh show, yeah, what was I doing Tuesday? Cause y'all said yeah, y'all we, said to go to. That. I think I might have just had like I don't know. But how did it go? Was no, the show was, yeah the show was great. Show was great, man. It, it was a lot of love. Um, the show was perfect, but. Outside of that show, I went through some bullshit this week leading up to it. Mm-hmm. So I got a pedicure, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got a pedicure. Yo, there definitely is f- feedback on this. Dude. Yeah, somebody, um, I'm getting feedback, so I heard it that time. There's definitely, I don't know what it is. Maybe my head percent might be too high. It is. Yeah. My head says too high. But, you know, uh, uh, but I guess I'll just have to fuck up my hair. I'll send you my bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, my... my my pedicure, I got a pedicure this week, and that shit was trash. And I should have known. I should have known. Yeah, you you get pedicures. I should probably more than um, treat yourself, man. Yeah, no, no, Especially, I'm not against it. Because as much as you want, you, you skateboarding your yeah. feet. Yeah, your your feet your feet are valuable. Well, that's the other thing. Where I mean, like. And I'm not my even. My feet are always getting yeah. fucked up to the point where it's just like. And I'm not saying this to try to flirt with you. But you should take care of your feet. 
I wouldn't take that as flirting. Now that you said that, that you was flirting, now, now that I know that's how you might flirt, I'm going to be on high alert thinking about that shit. <laughs> no, but, um... <laughs> now that I know that's how you test the water, that's how you dip a toe in, no pun intended. I'm, I'm kind of, like, cautious. Because that's the thing about... Foot niggas, man. You think it's all cool? It's like pit bulls. You think they all right, but one day they just bite you. Damn. Eat a baby or something. And you're like, damn, everything everybody said was true. No, but I knew this pedicure was going to be terrible when I walked in. And at first, I didn't, you know, you, my usual spot, right? My usual spot. But when I sat down, it was two new ladies, right? And I should, I knew. I knew the pedicure was going to be trash as soon as I saw the person doing it was Mexican. Because it's like... This is a level of racism that like I feel no, like I haven't afforded yet. No, it's not even to be racist. Because, you know, I love, I love my essays. I do. I love them. But it's just like <laughs> certain people need to stay in certain jobs. And we talk about, you know, the whole migrant issue of migrants taking our jobs. But now we got migrants taking other migrant jobs. Yeah, that's a and, problem. And it's a problem when it's like when you step outside your lane. I need a, I'm sorry, I need an Asian lady to do my feet. <laughs> See, I that's do, why I said, I, I, like, I don't even understand it's, it's not, why that's bad. It's, yeah, because it's not racist. It's kind of like when you go to Benny Hanna's and you see a nigga on a grill. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to see, I don't want to see a nigga <laughs> chopping up. The food at Hibachi? Yeah, and it's not even that is a black person. Like, it's just that I know the hiring practices at this place are too lax. <laughs> That's why I don't like it. It's like, it's a quality control thing for me. But I don't understand why a Mexican can't do toes. Because I mean, on the West Coast, I'm pretty sure it's a little bit more like normal. But like to see that when we got that message, I, yeah. I was alarmed. I looked at yeah. it and I'll go, oh, shit, where are you? Like that that's yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that the fucking... Republican National Convention. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck did you come up with this idea? Mexicans are doing pedicures. They're <laughs> criminals, and they don't know how to paint toes. How did it come out? Oh, uh, that's true. I mean, I love with my feet falling the same way. My <laughs> shit was still rough. All she did was basically clip my toes. I could have did that. It was. I got no collars remover. No fish. Bro, nothing. I, bro, my feet. That shit was terrible. That shit, like, it left me... I mean, I still tipped, you know, because, you know, I understand this is a hard-working woman. Yeah. But it's just, like, the the skill wasn't there. Yeah, well, the problem is probably because she has three other jobs. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I don't think it's that Mexicans shouldn't be doing pedicures. I think they just... A pedicurist shouldn't be a, a third job. <laughs> like, you shouldn't be like yeah. clocking out at the hotel like, and just going over to the motherfucking nail salon. Right, yeah, it's like, focus on my feet. No, I don't want to buy mangoes right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, she make her own hot sauce. She don't got time to put the right pressure on feet. Now. Her feet are probably bad, too, bro. That's, I, so, I agree with you. I don't think that that's a th the right third job. Yeah, yeah and the, the other thing is, chi uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, they have the advantage of being able to talk shit in a language that we definitely don't speak. Like niggas know Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> like if if he she call your feet ugly, you gonna yeah. recognize yeah. that shit. So there's a level of like nervousness that she probably has that uh, somebody who speaks like Mandarin or like whatever. Yeah. Vietnamese is the name of the language, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody who speaks that, they Vietnamese, know we don't speak Cantonese. That shit. Cantonese. We don't speak none of that shit. So you can say whatever you want. Y'all can laugh and have a good time. You know, she can work out some frustrations on your foot. Whereas a Mexican, I know what Negro mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Negro fail <laughs> uh, Also too I want to give um, An apology My mom was mad at me For what? Last week when we talked About Planet Fitness What did we say About Planet Fitness? Um, this place where I don't know Like My mom just said You know they do be in there Getting a good workout in And stuff like that She said the staff is nice You can get a good workout At a stoplight <laughs> <laughs> Just climb the pole And do pull ups <laughs> Yeah, I, but I mean, I guess the staff is nice. I mean, you you gotta be you gotta be nice when you on parole. Yeah. Yeah. No disrespect to your mother, but they serve pizza there, so I stand by. They also serve said. bagels, and you know what? <laughs> I'm a member, bro. I'm not gonna keep in silence anymore. Last week, y'all shamed me. 
But yeah, I like yeah. Planet Fitness. It's like thirty bucks. My whole family goes. School Blink money. is thirty dollars too. Yeah, but they don't have Blink right here on Tommy. I mean, but this is the thing, and like, and I feel like this with gyms, right? You know the difference in a gym, right? The money you pay for a gym, it goes to certain things like what you're trying to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Like, like people might pay a lot for Equinox, right? Because you know they can work out, but then they also like the fact that it might have like good smoothies. It has a sauna, things like that. Um, you know the Wild LA Fitness. They might go for like the classes, the the the, the trainers. When people go to Planet Fitness, people do Planet Fitness and Blink. People do go to work out, but then I also know people that go there to survive. Like there's niggas that go to Planet Fitness because they could take a shower anytime at night. <laughs> yeah, there's gotta be some sort of like. Well, like Equinox, yeah. that probably be like how much a month? You think like two hundred, two hundred dollars? Probably like a cheap Equinox might be two hundred. It, it could be like, especially in the city, an Equinox probably is probably like three or four hundred a month. You know, because I, I had seen um, you know how they see like uh, they'll do like fucking TikToks or whatever the fuck of like mm -hmm. this tiny apartment in New York. Like, let's go see how this person lives, and they live in like a fucking shoebox basically. Yeah, it looks like shit. And this lady was talking about how she pays like six hundred fifty dollars for rent because mm -hmm. she wants to like save her money and invest, but she pays like fucking. Four hundred dollars for a gym, mm. so, so you could just get a fucking yeah. slightly better apartment. Right, but I say that to say because when I was going to Blink in Jersey City, I'm in a locker room changer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm filthy. Yo, I'm in, that's yeah. That, I'm, I don't, yeah, I'm in a locker room changing, and this guy opened his locker. And a pile of bills just fell out. Like dollar bills? <laughs> no, like <laughs> like you owe like us. No. Oh. And I'm like, this locker room isn't supposed to be an address. <laughs> they they supposed to like <laughs> like it shouldn't be a mailman coming in to drop off shit at Blink Locker three eighty two. Yeah, <laughs> they're supposed to like check the lockers every like twenty four hours to make sure nobody's like living there. Mm. But um, Shit. you probably you probably uh you know pay the guy a little bit to look the other way yeah Just blink yeah i canceled my blink uh membership oh, yesterday i don't want to do it no more i'd rather just do pull-ups in the park yeah. fucking chase white people <laughs> that's, a, that's a good workout yeah <laughs> that's a good workout. all i need is fucking some good running shoes and a visible enough <laughs> you don't want to you want them to know you got a so they run as fast as possible. <laughs> like it has to be a little bit big, but not so big that you get stopped and you go to you know jail for it. But like you get a and you just flash it and then run. <laughs> That's like two hundred calories right there. Uh, you can shoot. eat whatever you want for dinner. <laughs> Let me see. You want to get into the the questions from the listeners first? We do have yeah. some questions for listeners. We need like a... Or a matter of fact, no, whoa. We need a sparkle sound effect. Wait, hold up. I guess before, since we talking about working out... Questions from listeners. Oh, okay. Well, shit. Yeah, you, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Well, yeah, we'll start off with some questions from the listeners, man. I like this listen. I like this question a lot, actually. There's one listener asked. He said, what do we think is like the most... The most important topics or classes that should be integrated in schools today you well i know you you had something you yeah go first, Max. um i think that going forward the integration of uh writing code reading okay. code and uh intro engineering courses need to be given in like I don't know, like, when did, did you guys have a typing class? Was it, like, middle school? Yeah, yeah, we, I had a typing class in high school. Freshman oh, okay. year of high school. Yeah, Man, so but I, no, actually, we did have, um, we did have one in, in middle school, uh, intro, intro yeah, to typing. Yeah, intro to typing. Yeah. I think that that's going to be the next wave. Everyone I know, pretty much jobs are looking like writing code is going to be the wave. And then engineering brought in around the maybe early high school thing, so people can have hands-on practice. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people really have forgotten how to do shit with their hands, and it's, it's kind of yeah. nuts. And it's, it's also crazy, too, that, like, the thing that people used to, like, kids used to code, but didn't even realize they were coding, like, making, like, MySpace pages and Tumblr. Oh, yeah, and things yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. coding is really not that hard. You just got to find a practical use for it to keep your brain, like, engaged. Because you mm -hmm. have to, like, have a goal in mind. Mm -hmm. But it, it's so fucking, it really isn't hard. Yeah, it's just, like you said, just having that, having, like, 
having that understanding of why I'm doing this. Yeah, you got to know, like, the structure that you're building is towards uh, something particular. And if you were to, like, coding's easy. It's like st- especially for kids, because <laughs> yeah. your brain's just a fucking sponge at that yeah. age. Yeah. Well, that's why I suggested going so yeah. young, because I realize how much of a imprint, like, the tablet and, like, touch generation right now is having for super young kids. Right. Like, I know several kids between two and five who speak very like, eh, like they'll talk to you when they want, but they can hop on an iPad and show and bring up whatever full explanation. So like, I understand that the physical technology is, it's there enough now that kids should probably just get it aimed in the right direction. So learn how to, you know, write code, learn how to read like a, what is it? JavaScript still a thing. I don't know shit really about it. I just know that it's going to be important. You know? No, no, that, I like that a lot. Cause it's so much money in coding software. I'm sure you know. Yeah. It's, it's all, it's all money. It's yeah. all fucking, <coughs> it's um, all bullshit. Like, you know, they just make up words that you and you wouldn't understand so that me and another guy who do understand can just, like, make money and seem smart. Fucking yeah. dorks. Yeah, we'd just be like, hey, did you do the fucking, you know, I'm not um, going to go through all the words. But they make up words so you guys pay us to do shit. Um, You want me, you want me to go next? Are you what, next? like classes that they should yeah. teach in school? Yeah. I mean, I got a bunch of things. One of them would be, like, a, a history class with, like, an actual honest look. Like, we have to actually figure out, how to, as a, a a free country, no, we're not the freest country. Let's get that. But we are a free country of sorts. As a free country, you need to be able to talk about your history honestly without the kids hating the country. You know what I mean? Like, that seems to be the thing we're always caught in between, like, Hold up. You can't teach kids about the Civil Rights uh, Act because then they'll fucking learn to hate America. And it's like, well, clearly they need to know about that because if there's something that would make them hate where they come from, they need to know. But they also need to have like a like an honest look where they just go, I mean, we could take this in a new direction that works yeah. better. You know, you feel me? Like, it's just, yeah. it's, it's like, I feel like we see that shit on TV and I'm like, are, are there any adults even talking right now? Like, does anybody yeah. have a brain in their head? It's so easy. Just make, right. hey, racism was bad, but we can make it not bad anymore. It's like let so him cool. cook. I'm going to let him. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, that. Yeah. That, that is that, a dope that, idea. Yeah. That I does like, make sense. Like, yo, fucking, we did build this country on slavery. But, like, we gave them all reparations and we started doing things to fix it. And now things are better. Like, Germany does this shit. And, and you also don't want to lie, though. No, no, but, because you, you know, in Germany... It's actually illegal to deny the Holocaust. Yeah, it should be illegal. To, like, all the shit they did there yeah. worked well. And it's illegal because, you know, if you deny it, if you deny that it happens, that's how kind of history repeats. When yeah. you ignore the fact that something bad actually did take yes. place. America's so, just a bigger corporation than Germany, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, got, we stand to make more money by pretending none of this shit really happened. Yeah. Germany was cool. They was making money, but they didn't want to make it in America money. <laughs> no, I like that. I think the classes that we should integrate or the topics that we should talk about, you know, kind of how like in a high school we have a gym or PE, physical education. We need to have mental education. Mm-hmm. We need to have a mental health class as far as teaching about this the stigma of like it's okay to get help it's okay to get help we need to teach children early that it's okay to seek therapy or how to find how to find emotional support whether that be in something you like or in others i like that one um because you how many times was you overwhelmed in school (laughs) and you had no like there was no sort of resource available to you where there should be somebody where you go, look, I'm very overwhelmed by all this shit. And then somebody goes, oh, yeah, that's fucking normal. So here's what you probably should do. Right. Like nobody, they kind of make you, they either make you feel weird for like being stressed out. Or they're like, well, this is just a part of it. So fucking suck it up. Like it's just dismissive. Right. And also too, like, you know, some of the things that should be taught like in a mental health class is something as little as how to control your emotions. Or how to, how to not get overwhelmed and... Basically, how to not crash out. Yo, that's real shit. Like, there should be a class like, look, I know it makes sense that if a nigga disrespect you, y'all start fighting. But here's why that kind of isn't the way to go. 
Because it, it takes a lot of time for a man to learn, like, I don't got to fight everybody. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like, because it, it, it hits you once you get older, like, you know what? I probably won't ever see this person again. Like, it ain't even, like, you'll get into something with somebody on the train, and then you realize, like, yo, I ain't going, what, what are the odds of me running into this person again tomorrow or next week or whatever? It's cool for me to just say, you know what, you got it, and I just go home and see my family. Yeah, it's, I mean, they probably wouldn't want, they would probably want to start this in other places before they take it to, like, Philadelphia or New York. Like, they want to, they should probably start this in, like, a place where it could actually work first, mm -hmm. and then have some success stories, and then branch it into, because you start that shit in Philly, I feel, I feel like if I heard that when I was a kid, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Not only re the only thing not like, so head. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> this nut ass nigga <laughs> wait wait hear that shit but like it makes sense because they yeah. they i mean they try to make well i feel like it all goes hand in hand the only reason i ain't getting fights in high school is because if you got into one fight they would kick you out like one yeah. and like I, there's probably a couple people that could like you know get away with you know yeah. uh got away with it but yeah. you know nobody liked me at school like the teachers and they kind of hated me so i wouldn't have been able to get away with shit like that but like they make high school sound like and like middle school they try to make it sound so important like you got to do this you got to do everything on time mm -hmm. this is important if you don't if you don't get it together now you'll never make it in life you won't be able to make it in college you got to ask me to use the bathroom like all this shit that mm -hmm. makes that like mm -hmm. immediate part of your life seem so fucking important and if yeah. they were just like look it's a big world out there do well here and go out and see that shit. Like this shit don't matter, but just do well here. And also, it's funny. I was I was just having this conversation with this comedian last night, right? Where he was go ahead name drop. Go ahead. No, no, it was, he was talking to Chris Rock last. No, night. no, I was talking to <laughs> no, I was talking to Seton. You know Seton Smith. Uh yeah. Yeah. Is he was, famous? No. Uh, that's why he. Knew I mean, but he, his name. he opens for John Mulaney. So there we go. Like, <laughs> Thank you. I knew I knew there was something in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was talking, we were talking last night. <laughs> we was talking last night. I like, about, I like shit. He cool. About, yeah. um, like, he said, <laughs> uh, this might be a bad point to make, but, like, he said he was watching the Kevin Samuels video, right? Mm -hmm. And Kevin Samuels was talking to this 20-year-old. And in a video, the, the the young person just kept saying how they, how they felt. And Kevin Samuels was like, Yo, I hear you saying about this is how you feel. I'm telling you from actual experience. So I feel like, you know, Kevin Samuels, he might not be the best teacher, but mm -hmm. I think that's what we need more of, though. People like... Yeah, 90% of our listeners, like, just tuned out the rest <laughs> of that sentence when you say Kevin Samuels. But that's a great point. No, no, but that's what, like, these kids need. They need somebody to speak to them from, like, about mental health, from a point of experience, and that... It's going to be okay as time passes, as opposed to them just going off their intuition and just have having to figure out as they get older, especially like in today's time, like where a lot of these kids are struggling with their mental health. Yeah, there needs to be somebody because like there's times when I feel like younger people, they're like, yo, I don't know how this is ever going to get better. Like, I can't see a, a future. Like, I can't predict anything good happening. It's like it's a reason you don't got no respect there because you a fucking idiot. You're fucking yeah. a teenager. You don't know shit. There needs to be people that's like, look, it's normal for you to not know what the fuck you're talking about and not have any idea what the fuck is going on. Because you're a fucking dummy. Yeah. You're a kid. You're not supposed to. You just got to fucking learn step by step until you get to a fucking. Yeah. But I mean, the yeah. only reason I mean, yeah. where I grew up in fucking Northeast is like. Like, you around white people that, like, go into the military at 18. Like, that's a lot of the sentiment you got around. Yeah. I mean, it's the black people are the same everywhere. Yeah. But, like, that's the kind of white people I was around. Like, oh, when I turn 18, I'm going to go to the military. Yeah. But, like, these kids don't. Like, it's crazy when we think about <clears throat> these kids struggling with mental health when we consider what we going through. Like, we had to grow up. We had to grow up in school watching the towers get hit, watching the heads get chopped off. Oh yeah, those are those are good videos. I mean, you ever see the video of a dude like it was a bald head dude, and he put his head inside of a coochie? Yep. Remember yeah. that video? We yeah. saw that in the we watched that in the middle 
of English class. <laughs> like, fuck what this book has to say about society. There's yeah. a hairy vagina and a bald head. Right. We was watching jars get shoved up as, <laughs> and then had to remember facts about holding Caulfield. <laughs> yeah. Like, all the, all the information that came into my fucking brain was, you know, basically expunged by Lil B, Suck My Dicko, playing in the background <laughs> off my phone. Like, uh, teachers making good points, but I'm listening to fucking music <laughs> while I'm trying to do this shit. It's not pertaining. Oh, that's that's another thing that needs to be integrated back in the schools too. Lil B, I, no, <laughs> no I, bring Lil B back in schools. I get that, you know, kids have. I get that, you know, technology is a part of our society now, but the the constant need of it, where children shouldn't be allowed to have their phones out. No, I think anything that could be used as a crutch for dealing with anxiety should be, like, acknowledged. Like, that's why they they never tell kids, like, don't use your phone because uh, it exploits your anxieties and your developing brain. And if you use it, go ahead, do it. But everything I'm saying is going to happen, watch it happen to you. If they were to do that, I'd be like, shit, I don't think I'm going to do it. Because even, I watched this video the other day, right? It was these two kids fighting. I saw this video on, on my timeline. It was these two f- kids fighting in the high school class. And it was a wild fight. But what really caught my eye was the kid just chilling in class with AirPods in. <laughs> that shit, I'm like, yo, this shit should not be allowed. At all. It's like, like you said, it, it, it's such a crutch. Even a simple, like, you know, I'm, I deal with it too. Whereas, like, out of boredom, when I'm at a show, the first the first instinct is, let me pull out my phone and just start scrolling or looking at apps, even though I have nothing to do or not, nobody to communicate with. Yeah. And we're becoming too dependent on it, and that shouldn't be a part of the school setting. Yeah, like, remember that night that uh, somebody stole my phone? Yeah. And you were there for a little bit, but that whole night, I was just, like, out talking to people, just, like, on the street at the fucking comedy club, just, like, talking to everybody. That was a good time. People were, like, receptive of the energy because I just didn't have, like, that old, like... That barrier there. Yeah, where I was just, like, I'd rather be on my phone because, I mean, I couldn't be. So it it was just weird, you know? Like, what did people do before? I don't fucking even have any... I can't even fathom what people did when they were bored in public when before we had phones. Like, play a fucking crossword puzzle or some shit. Got high. Got high. (laughs) What what do you do if you're sober, though? You're basically just a pussy. (laughs) Yeah. They're just like, all right, get away, fuck nigga. No, but that you want to sit here in, in the dark with your thoughts? It's <laughs> a uh, bar, but, asshole. But um, now the other question that that we had, this guy said, "I'm 21 and I feel like I haven't found my identity yet." How long did it take y'all? Again, this is why you need to talk to older people to be 21 and think, "Why haven't I found my identity?" Because you're stupid. You're and a that, kid, and that's okay. You're a fucking kid. 21. I know you could like you know, fucking you can't run kill a, Arabs in the military and do all types of shit. That is crazy though that you could go fight overseas, but you can't rent a car. Yeah, like you can get drunk. You, you could can get a all. you could get a rocket launcher. <laughs> you could get a but rocket you, launcher, but you can't go get a new Acura. <laughs> you could drive drunk, but the car can't be rented and shit. That is fucked up. You can't get a, like no loans. You can get a fucking student loan. But yeah, you twenty one. You're not supposed to have shit figured out. Cause I mean, if we had a society that was geared towards that, then I'm sure there's like countries where they're like, by the time I'm twenty one, I got fuck you, nigga. This America. Uh, but where we where we at twenty one don't really mean shit. Yeah, and I think you we kind of touched on that point where it's like uh, other countries. You kind of you might have to figure out shit a lot faster. But it's like even with that, that's. That's not really their true identity in the sense of some countries, because you have to grow up so fast, it's like you really don't get that chance to fully discover yourself. Yeah, like a, a nigga in like a communist China, he he don't even, it, self don't even matter. Just you right. know, don't get arrested by the secret police and shit. Yeah, it's like my identity is to grow up and provide. Mm. And, you know, for the woman it might be my identity is to grow up and be a mother and make this house into a home where for us we have that time to we we're afforded that freedom 
to discover ourselves or to have certain dreams that might not be allowed other places. But mm-hmm. with that, that, that's the beautiful it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing because it's like I have forever to discover myself. Yeah, yeah, like niggas don't find themselves. You be forty, don't even find like that's why they like go through midlife crises and start fucking like eighteen year olds because they don't know who the fuck they are. Like yeah. twenty one, I was on that. Sh- I'm on some nut shit sometimes now. So like twenty one, <laughs> right? I was a dickhead at twenty one. I couldn't even fucking fathom like half the shit that like all the ideas I got now, I couldn't have come up with when I was twenty one. I mean, which you shouldn't, because it's like we still even me. I'm thirty two, right? I'm thirty. T- I just turned thirty two. Technically, I'm still in my titty boy phase. I ain't, I ain't hit my two chains age yet. Like Damn, I might. Did he really not turn into two chains until like thirty something? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So it's like you never know when you're gonna find your identity and and figure out which direction you might need to head towards. Yeah, and it's like that's the burden of being a like individualistic society. It's like Western thing. Where you like you remove from the family unit, mm-hmm. so like there you don't got no, you don't really think about like what's my purpose in my family, like how do I make sure like I could I could be my own person, but like how do I make sure like my family's straight, and like I have a role there as well as in society. It's kind of all just like I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for me, 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 mm-hmm. maybe your mom, because you know if you grow up with just like one other person, usually they become an extension of yourself, right? But for the most part, we all just thinking about like us. And I feel like that's why we always lost because there's more of a like the universe is supposed to be the purpose of shit. You feel me? Like, yeah, motherfuckers being together in some sort of <coughs> common goal, but we don't got no common goals. Some niggas want abortion, some people want not abortion. I don't know what the fuck is going on anymore. <laughs> uh, piece of advice though, yeah, at 21, making the mistake of wondering um, about coming into your identity or trying to figure out your identity is kind of lackluster because that's something that's on the outside. My piece of advice to you would be just focus on who you think you are. Get ready to get, take this time to know yourself better than to know your identity because your identity could always change. You know what I'm saying? Outward focusing. The more time you spend right now getting to know yourself, knowing what you actually like, finding your passion, it'll save you trouble in the long run. Yeah, Yeah, that's good. Knowing the things you like, knowing the things you don't like, like everything's not going to be figured out. But if you just try to focus on like, what you want to do out without without like outside forces? Yeah, because that's know thyself. Been, it's yeah. it's a lot easier. I know it's a lot easier said than done. But if I could have gone back and done one thing and told myself twenty one, like, bro, don't worry about outside so much. I know you're caught up in a lot yeah. of you know this, especially coming out of a time where your reputation was a lot. So it's like, nah, man. If you, if I would have took a time to really analyze and become more self aware of things, I don't think I would have had the issues and even some of the anxiety that I have now. And like it's great. Yeah, I feel like when I was, if I would, if I could tell myself, fucking, what am I, 26? I'm about to be 27, five years ago. I would just be like, I would just tell myself, all the things you're doing are basically good. Just do those more intensely and with more passion. Mm. And like, don't try to like find like new ways to try to like fucking change yourself all the time. Like, the shit that I'm doing now, I'm like, damn, I wish I was like more fucking focused on that back then. So that I could have a little bit more breathing room. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I was focused, but I'm like, you kind of know what you want to do to some extent. So you just got to find a way to make that shit work the best that you can and not worry about other people and shit. Because that's what gets people fucked up. They're like, well, these niggas got this and they got this. And then you find out later on the whole time that they wanted to themselves because that shit suck. Yeah. Yeah. Like comparison. You can't really get caught up in comparison because that will take the joy out of everything that you're currently doing. And comparison will drive you crazy. So it's like, focus on the things that you can control and just enjoy, enjoy, like, you know, just enjoy the journey. Like Enjoy the hustle, man. Yeah. That's yeah. just the best thing. To, that, that's probably the greatest advice you could give yeah. is like, listen, man, you're not going to find your identity for some time because you're not going to know anything for some time. Experience is going to be what the great divider is. And I've always said that experience... <laughs> Plus, like, in some form of intelligence or intellect will give you wisdom. That's the yeah. key component. And you don't really know yourself until you go through some shit. Hell yeah. Yeah, until yeah. so your back is against the wall and your stomach is hungry. Like, you really won't know what you made of. But you know what? Those are some of the most beautiful times because yeah. it'll show you. 
Cause like for, yeah, it's good. Yeah. For me, what really helped me find myself was getting comfortable being alone, and it took it took me going on a road by myself. Like when I'm like being here, being in New York, being in Philly, I always had that safety net of company around. Whether it be I have somebody with me or other comedians or stuff like you know, just other people there to like kind of give me some reassurance. But then when I started traveling, it was like, all right, I have to figure out how to like get through this by myself and be alone with my thoughts. That's when I, I really started to discover myself and be really comfortable being myself. Yeah, I don't know how you do that without being fucked up. <laughs> but I, being alone with my thoughts is probably my biggest problem. Yeah, well, you know, I start off, I go to Cracker Barrel. I don't hate that. I really would like to yeah. go to like a Cracker Barrel or a Waffle yeah. House. Yeah, something I, like a little more homey. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If yeah. I go out to eat after this, I gotta go to fucking get pizza. Uh, but yeah, those are some good questions, man. And definitely, definitely keep the questions coming through, man. We definitely appreciate it. Yeah, um, especially from young people, because <laughs> even even if it's like two years, like I've talked to people like I'm a year or two years older. But, like, I just happen to have experience with some shit that they never seen before. And that shit could just be enlightening. Like, just hearing from somebody that, like, no. everything that you think about or that you think is, like, the end of the world is actually, like, a normal part of life. And that, like, most people go through that shit. That shit will take a lot of pressure off of you. you like, yeah. damn, really? Like, it's... So, everything isn't just, like, you get money and bitches at 18 and everything's up from there. <laughs> That's not realistic. No, yeah. it's not. yeah. But um, I, I mean, I did it. But <laughs> <laughs> I guess we get into some of the topics this week. First, I want to start off with um sending um condolences and prayers out. We lost Fat Man Scoop this today. Fat Man Scoop he passed away at the age of fifty three. Hip hop pioneer. Um, he he was performing last night. He was performing last night on stage, and sadly during the performance collapsed and was rushed to the hospital, and didn't make it. Yeah, and that's fucking sucks. Yeah, it sucks just for everybody, you know, his family, his loved ones, the people that were performing with him, um, the 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 crowd there to support him. Do you do we know what show he was performing at? During the in Connecticut, um, and it's is is fucked up. Like fifty three, fifty three. Like we losing too many of our people too early. Yeah, when you start getting older, don't ignore no signs of any sort of anything. You got to just, I mean, you can't avoid fucking, uh, you know, the yeah. inevitable, but right, take yeah. care of yourself. Yeah, because, I mean, shit, we, like, so many rappers we don't lost early. Fat Man, like, just even recently. Most Fat of them. Man, I don't, yeah. When's the last, I mean, hip-hop ain't that old, but, like, rappers are not dying at 75. That is true. Hip-hop is so young, so uh, for us to lose so many legends... This early, we losing like we we want to see our people grow old. Like I want to see, I want to be able to see Jay Z and and Kanye and Lil Wayne. I want to see them grow to the like like a, a Bill Russell, Bill Walton. I want to see my favorite rappers get up there and have gray hair and wrinkly skin. But so you know we got to take care of ourselves because not even Elton John seventy seven still fucking kicking. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. There's no way he should be alive. But Children's it, blood. And this is it's our life. Mick Jagger. It's our life, like the lifestyle, and not just in eighty one. Not just in rap, and <laughs> or just be what you see. How much? <laughs> I just, so I just sit quiet. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how much dope does a white person have to do to die like a black man? A lot more than they got, bro. Yeah, clearly. But, 81 um, i mean that shit might have fucking helped his bloodstream or something but it's the the lifestyle and not just rappers but just entertainers in general but as far as the late nights the travelings in different city the the traveling city to city the the food you know it might be hard to get a good meal while you're on the road so it's like even i see it in comedy that's why so many comedians get sick where it's like you at the comedy club you're not trying to eat a solid <laughs> It's not going to be a good salad half the time. It's not going to be a good salad, and you can't eat salad in front of other comedians. <laughs> You're going to be getting called bitch-ass niggas 
that whole meal. Well, the, I mean, uh, you, that's you. If you around those type of comedians, you gotta do shit like that. Like you gotta wear some like freaky shit around some niggas that like will call you out on it because it, it helps you defend your decisions more. Yeah. <laughs> like you gotta wear a fishnet shirt <laughs> around some homophobic niggas. So you know, like this yeah. is me. Like y'all gotta yeah. deal with this shit, and you yeah. gotta be able, to, as a comedian too, like you gotta be able to like come back yeah. on shit like that. So yeah, the because the, the, niggas be fat and ugly and shit, talking shit. Like we not right. having that. Yeah, so it's like we definitely, we definitely do gotta take care of ourselves, man. Um, so yeah, that's what that's that's the main thing. Number one thing to take away from this: rest in peace, fat man scoop. I um, you know, that really does fucking suck uh, a lot. And yeah. um, let's let's fucking not keep this pattern going. We've seen it a lot, and um, you know yeah. we can't do everything about it. But you know, take a minute to fucking try to make yourself feel better yeah. for your family and shit. Like when you go, I mean, when you go at like ninety, everybody mm. you fucking that really care about you is gone too. Right. But you go like fifty, like. It's people that was expecting a call from you on Monday and shit. Right. It was it was people that was like, like you said, because not even just him passing. Um, the DJ musician in Houston, B King, he also just passed too. He just passed really young, and it's just sad to see. It's like, I think he he passed thirty nine. Thirty nine, man. And he looked it, like he was in good shape too. That sucks. I don't, I don't even. Just like suddenly, he just yeah. died. Pulmonary, oh, you can't do shit about one of them. That's that's one of them things that's like, the fuck are you going to do about that? Yeah. Pulmonary embolism. Yeah, so everybody out there, man, not just entertainers, just, you know, people in general. Take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves, you know. Do what you enjoy because you never know. You never know. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to revisit the conversation we had last week about when we talked about Dr. Umar, about his comments about hip-hop. We touched on, we touched on whether rappers have the like, if who is it? We touched on whether like you know is rappers' responsibility to fix their communities and get back to their communities, and we talked about that. But I guess what we kind of got to forgot to break down in that conversation is, has hip hop done more harm than good? That's, yeah, that's yeah, hard. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of hard yeah. to answer. My my instinct wants to say no. Yeah, I want to say no. Also, I want to say no. Also, for a lot of different reasons, because what year did rap start? Nineteen seventy nine, probably. I don't know. Seventy seven. I, I, like, all right. So don't we, they don't they say like fucking DJ Cool Herc started or something? Yeah, isn't that like the official? Right. Yeah, stand? they say that. Yeah. Okay. So we say rap started. Okay, 1973, right? 73, god damn. So when you look at the music from that, that point, you know, rap was this thing that came from, it was a party. It was a party for the community in the Bronx, right? It start, that's where it started at, and it rapidly spread. And now when you look at the type of music that was growing in hip-hop, where it was just the party where, at that time, the rapper wasn't even the most important person. It was really the DJ. The rapper was just somebody to like that was um there just f- basically being the mouthpiece for the DJ to showcase how good he was on the turntables. MC, master go- ceremony. Right. I wish there would be some more of that too because rappers are too egotistical when reality the beat is the only thing. Like the beat is the only thing that really matters. And it's the same. It really is the same format today where it's like the beat's really good and the rapper is there to like talk about you know, to hype everybody up about the beat. Mm-hmm. But he talking about how much better he is than all these other people. Yeah. But it's like, nigga, you're not really that important. So when you look at rap from that time, right, I say from the 73 to when it started until the late 80s, it was on some, like, party stuff, and, like, it was more so just bigging yourself up. Like, it was still, like, you know, that whole bravado of, like, flexing and talking about yourself, you know, as far as, like, LL, Rock him, Big Daddy Kane. The shift came around. Well, even like Public Enemy. Public Enemy was All like the first niggas ones. was like, we're the best, and they were like, right though. Yeah. Like a lot of people were like, I'm the best, and I'm like, I don't even know you. And then it started to turn more. It started to turn more uh, socially. No, matter of fact, I don't want to say that. It, it was always socially awareness 
in the music starting with the message but then it really got harder with public enemy and nwa right now and then that's when like the whole gangster rap comes into play with nwa ice t with the but even with that let me see oh yeah schoolie d is schoolie d schoolie d locked up right that's cool see uh the one you talking about to do that oh, kill oh, somebody at bank robbery yeah that's cool see. oh okay all right I had my letters wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know that story, right, man? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, but um, yeah. So, but even then, we don't blame like even with 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 like NWA. Look, look at what has come out of NWA. Whereas somebody like Ice Cube, he was like you know promoting like blackness, mm-hmm. um, following your faith making sure that you you have your legal affairs in order as far as reading your contracts and in a, and they did not do that <laughs> nope. 40 years later they're not doing that <laughs> and then, but then like you know he goes on to make great movies he goes on to make a friday but then even his transition to now to making a are we there yet you can't be that deep in the streets to make that like you still have to be like just a a I don't want to say a good person at heart, but I mean he is, and he's such a smart businessman to where like with the movies, his, the basketball league he has now. So many things have come great out of hip hop. I think we're just looking at what's happening now in hip hop and saying that it's done more harm because it's certain things that's always been around. It's always been crime in every community, not just ours. It's always been drug use in every community. It's just now, but I feel like when we say hip hop is doing harm it's not really on the music i think it's just the type of culture that we grow up in all around like we live in a instant gratification culture we live in a clout culture as far as like look at the the rappers in philly and the like the whole beef that's going on with like the the new wave of like drill rappers mm-hmm. where you had one rapper that just recently passed away a few months ago he dug up somebody's grave right that doesn't happen if it's not this whole thing with the internet like i feel like with the with the internet now the disrespect is going to another place that it might not would have had yeah this shit is just is is already bad and like music is just because i mean it's a mouthpiece you know what i'm saying like right if you got something to say and, and you black in the 80s you know like the you know the stereotype of black people are gonna make music and they're funny, so you know you take comedy, you take music, and you put messages in that because mm-hmm. that's the only thing that they might let you speak with. So you use that to do something intelligent. But I feel like we at this point where like not every but not not just black people are confused. Like everybody's confused. Like black people are confused because we just like now what? Like we got all this rebellion energy from the eighties and nineties mm-hmm. where we just like yeah like NWA Public Enemy where they were just like you know fuck the government all that shit the system's fucked up but now he's just like now what like as a regular person like what do you do now that you've acknowledged there's a problem like what Cause, now because like for us no, we, but there's no yeah. there's no what's the yeah. next step in music like what are niggas yeah. gonna say they say the same shit they said in the 80s like nobody wants to hear the same shit but, but what does that say though what does what, what say what does that say that the same yeah. message that it was being pumped in the late 80s early 90s as far as the government not doing right by people people receiving unjust uh practice from the government from policing community standards what does it say that you know what you could say the same thing nowadays no we're, and, we're just exhausted we're yeah. too tired to do anything i feel like no no and i'm glad you say that mm. because that's why i don't like umar saying that hip-hop has done more harm than done more harm than good he's too smart to blame the people that are making the music instead of the people that the people that put these people in these situations Mm -hmm. like he's fully aware of how the government and the policies placed in our neighborhoods are just like worldwide like affects us so fully aware that the people that push the music so to say the music is harmful it's like no it's all types of music out there is we can name we can name plenty of rappers that make what we would call conscious music or 
you know more just um or just music about fucking like that's always look, you it don't got to be conscious but if it's just n- not about violence and just about like smoking weed and fucking like that's that's still kind of like not rebellious but it's still kind of like down to earth in a way because it's human like mm-hmm. there's something everybody like to do nobody wants to kill each other it's not technically negative it's not the music's problem it's just like is is what's pushed is is what's promoted yeah it's like who wants to hear who wants to be preached to like fight the power all right i get that you know what i'm saying we all at fucking the black college so we all think about the same shit we all talk about the same shit so i want to hear your music you know but like if my my parents were saying that same shit and nothing has changed i don't want to hear that shit no more and i think that's how every younger person feels in this country like i don't want to hear the same shit with no action so like if we were to come up like this is what every every person in their individual community could do and we were to actually like push some sort of um you know like programs and like just educational shit and just put something forward that people could actually do individually but like if people felt individually like they could make a difference in some shit they'd want to hear something that reflects that but niggas just want to make money but like, I don't want to hear that shit. I want to just make my own money. But also for you growing up, like you listen to, like what kind of you listen to street music, right? Like you listen to like Jeezy or like yeah, I listen to like all that shit, right? Like and same with me growing up, I was listening to all of that Fifty Ti, Jeezy, um, what other, all the rappers that would like become more considered street rappers. But yeah, I think Gucci Man was probably my favorite rapper when I was a kid. It's devilish. But with, but you knew the difference of like listening to it and actually going out and doing it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I played Call of Duty. I never shot nobody. Right. So to blame that on hip hop, where it's like, it's parents. Like I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like it's so many different factors. Not not just to blame it on parents. It's parents. It's um, poverty. And schooling. it's propaganda. Yeah. Kind of thing. Can I draw a parallel? Yeah. So. Because this is the one that affects us. That would I don't like the idea of saying or of anyone saying that uh, hip hop is going to be what caused a negative a negative effect on society. Just because one that is the one that's kind of going to be directly affecting our society. But just to draw a parallel as far as externally, in the late sixties, early seventies, satanic panic picked up around like all across yeah. Central America. And what that was was people accusing rock music of being what deterred people into being satanists murderers they actually have and not that i'm a big fan of the word but i think that for a newspaper it to start off by saying satanic rape on increase as it being a product of the music right is really just propaganda being slanted a certain type of way yeah. the other day or in the last episode asante had said about music reflecting the current times so what does that tell you if the yeah. same issues that we're going through haven't changed, but you're still finding a way to villainize it? Yeah, there right? was like 100%. It's a scapegoat mentality. That's basically right. what I was getting at. It's like you are able to say, oh, it's because of the music, as if the stories that the people are more than likely telling in all different genres of music aren't built off in a real-life experience. Right. Yeah, there was like, you know how there was like 10 times more serial killers back then? Mm-hmm. There was just a good soundtrack to it. Like, that's really, I feel like, what it is now. Like, it's not that niggas wouldn't kill each other if there wasn't music. It's just now, killing somebody else has a really good soundtrack. You know, you could drive in a car with a great song to go, uh, you know, to kill somebody. And I think they noticed that effect. Like, maybe it's the government and whoever the fuck. But it's like, think about, like, the music, uh, like, our grandparents was listening to, where it's just like, I'm going to go pick up a girl. <laughs> And you know, you know, we're gonna we're gonna make whoopee. Yeah. No, you know what's funny that you say huh? that. What you you ever see B- Boys in the Hood? Yeah. Like yeah. And Boys in the Hood, they was going to do a drive by to um, Love and Happiness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that part. Yeah. That's yeah. Funny they, as fuck though. Yeah, these niggas was riding around about to shoot somebody to some Al Green. <laughs> <laughs> I would much rather shoot somebody to that. But yeah, think about it, like people like you getting hyped up. You about to go get some uh, pussy in the sixties. You gonna go put on some like old, you know, timey, you know, love songs about yeah. like kissing in the moonlight or some shit. Because that's what's available to you. It's a good soundtrack to that. But like now, there's a good soundtrack to everything. Yeah. There's certain things that I do feel like has actually caused a lot of harm in hip hop. And one of the things that we kind of skipped over last week that you mentioned. 
that like you you mentioned in the last episode and it was just such a great point the homo eroticism in hip-hop bro that shit it, it really is i feel like that's caused a lot of harm in hip-hop because in rap and rap these niggas are homo erotic but at the same time they homophobic mm -hmm. which is just like the craziest contradiction there is these niggas be like as rappers that that talk about Dwayne Wade painting his nails and how he loves his daughter but at the same time these niggas is talking about I'll do life for my guy like I'll die for him that shit is, is, is so backwards you'll go to jail for this nigga but at the same time you talking about like I don't I don't I don't buy I don't take no bitches out like I only I only have sex with them. I ain't I ain't, I ain't treating them good. Yeah, my emotions are reserved for yours truly, my <laughs> right hand man. <laughs> it is the craziest shit. Yeah, I only I only get I only cry for my my best friends. The ten niggas that's in the music video standing behind me, subliminal. Uh, that that too that too that's the nigga want a train ran on them. <laughs> that's another form of whole mode eroticism. It's like this one nigga on stage. And he got thirty people that don't that don't know anything in music. They just grew up together, but the whole block gotta be on stage with him. Yeah, cause they all up there looking for bitches. They all up there together, horny. <laughs> That's weird. Y'all up there with gray sweatpants on, <laughs> getting horny together. Sure, you 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 looking to take out your your sexual urges on a woman, but you just feel good to have a hard dick with the guys <laughs> at the end of the day. That's why I don't go to strip clubs, cause that shit like, I'm not homophobic, but I don't do gay shit. That the no no, but that the whole the whole thing of like you know you see guys they be they be fighting to be in the section or like I've seen guys fighting to take a picture with a rapper, and they be pushing the girls out the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that shit is like. Yeah, I, I feel like that that's more damaging, cause it is. It's been this culture of like. You know, I'll 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 go to jail for my guys. I'll never tell on him. I put all my emotions in the gang, but then when it comes to women, it's like they I never trust a bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't trust these hoes. I don't. I don't. I I never lay up with a woman. I never. I don't. I don't. I don't pillow talk. I don't like. And that that whole thing. I don't pillow talk. Like I. I never. I never let a bitch know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> but you telling your guys all your deep emotions. I feel I, like, I'll let a woman know how I feel immediately. Oh. <laughs> Why your toes look like that? That's fucked up. Got some fucked up toes. Yo, that, I'm honest about my feelings. Yeah, like that. That I is, don't pillow talking though. I get that. That's don't. don't no. Nah. Don't don't tell random people your your fucking business. But like. Oh no, I pillow talk. I, like and I and I hate that. Like <laughs> I hate that. Like because they try to use that against you. It's like, bitch, I thought you cared about me. No, that's why you. I understand the adapt on that level where it's just like you can't just trust random people just because you fuck. Yeah, I thought you was a nice person. Nah, man, fucking is like basically bare minimum these days. Where it's like, let's fuck and then yeah, learn each other's first names. <laughs> like, let's get all the regular shit out the way. That really is how it is. Like, you, yeah, you had sex and then you were like, so what's your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um yeah, I feel like that's damaging hip hop, the homoeroticism. I feel like yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like it's too. I don't know if it's like I'm not mad at it because they being gay. I'm just like they taking like their weird urges out on women. Yeah, you like where I mean? women, women aren't even they're not treating women like people. It's more so. And women a, are definitely a, people. They're just less. It's a, a lesser <laughs> version. <laughs> No, nah. it's, it's really but, like the, the hatred for women uh, turns you into the thing that you hate the most, a gay person. You know what I mean? No, but it's like a weird level of bigotry. Incel rap? No, it is. Is that is. like a way to look at it? Like an incel? Because that's the, that's the description I'm kind of getting right now. It's like incel. It's like where. Yeah, because they're trying to yeah. restore their place as. Um, like the uh, hierarchy. It's like you and the bros over ladies. Yeah, and that's yeah. kind of. That is kind of a little suspect. Yeah, like in order for society to. Uh, function properly i the man have to be damn the dog just farted god damn he you farted that? i got a whiff real quick Hopefully, i'm not trying to I, catch it i want to stay what, over there wait the he farted was. maybe i want it to stay over there whatever it is 
I don't know. Something just fucked up my um, equilibrium real quick. What the fuck he put on a little about? face. Yo. Dogs, we right here. <laughs> like, I understand you as a parent, but that like, God damn, bro, we baby, are right bro. here, That's dogs. a dog. And like, yo, doing that, if he would have let another one go, you know how dangerous that would have been, fam? <laughs> like, yo, you would have thrown up everywhere, all the yeah. production. Like, bro. <laughs> Why you live so recklessly? <laughs> that's but fucking incel nuts. rap. Yeah, that's a good. That was a good point. And it, I, I don't know. It's not. I guess you can't call them incels because they are fucking. But like the attitude of like, uh, you know, um, the attitude. No, is is like this. women are women are lesser. Like yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. That seems to be like a big thing, and like, uh, I just I don't know. I don't get it. No, but also, you, grew up in the DMX generation. No, but it's not just like, that they treating women lesser. It's the fact that they're treating women like a possession. So it's like. It's people that it's it's not it's it's more than just rap too because we see it with like athletes where yeah, it's yeah, this yeah. culture of this woman used to date this person so now I want her like they how they're passing or how they're passing around hmm. the same like five or six women in these industries they're treating these women like like just like trophies are just like a a. a I, this is the sh- new shiny ribbon that yeah, I got. Yeah, yeah, like this is the denim tears of bitches. Yeah, like it's the new, <laughs> this is the new uh, thing that we all have to have. No, that makes I never. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. I got a weird question about that because, like, see, that's never been. I don't know. And once again, I'm not exactly uh, coming from the standpoint of someone who's out here just like slaying ass. What I'm saying is, I've never thought about the collective as being some, like a bragging point, like. If she dated these eight guys before me, like, I can't wait to be number nine. That always yeah. seemed like a fear. Like, you never want to be number nine. Now it does seem like kind of a, um, a merit. Like, oh, yeah. I'm also, I'm, I'm part of this, like, uh, I don't know, I guess yeah. we're, like, we're like Snow Eskimo Brothers. Yeah, that's I what mean, they would be. Because, like, for me, <laughs> we about to be that podcast that say, do body count matter? No, <laughs> not, a, yeah, it's not <laughs> no, even no, that. No. It's selective <laughs> no, circling. No, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not fucking nobody that fuck more than one person. <laughs> that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess no. My my issue is more or less like the you idea. You fuck of, more than one person, you going to hell. Damn right. <laughs> Let's bring back the Christian Ayatollah. I don't know what we're doing. With, nah. No, once you get with once you get with me, your count is at zero. It don't like I I just ignore you had a pass. Yeah, we reset. Me too. I'm all big on pretending yeah. that you you didn't exist before. Yeah, me. all I want to yeah, know yeah. is what did you, they teach you? Wait, you see how he joined us? Yeah, yeah. yeah he had to get it. Yeah, to get it. No, I get yeah. it. But no, I only, only want to know what niggas did do emotionally. I don't want to know what. <laughs> know what buttons will work? Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to know like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like when you see certain signs based on what a nigga did to you before. If I do some innocuous shit, are you going to then lash out at me? You mean like if you clap too loud and she flinches? That too. <laughs> like, yeah. Or do you mean like like just red flags in conversation? Like that's very specific. Like no, what? I mean, I mean, yeah, like red flags and conversations, or like you know, um, emotional responses. Yeah. Like you might say something or do something, or you might be like, you might be like private, and they think you yeah. like hiding. Uh, Whereas, but, like, I'm just, I'm just, pri- I'm just quiet. I, mean, I, I just don't want to talk right now, or like some shit like that. Like, I don't want you yeah. like, you know, you know what I'm saying. But, no, I, I get what yeah. you're saying, but, but my original point, I don't mean to like keep going, but I just, yeah. just so we're not lost on what I'm saying. It has nothing to do with account in general. It's the idea of being like. This celebrity, you've been with this celebrity, this celebrity, this celebrity, as if me having sex with you yeah. then puts me in the epsilon, in the upper uh, epsilon with those people. I got the perfect um, scenario for you. So, like, and this is what, like, is so corny when we talk about harm and hip hop, because now the, a lot of rap beefs don't even have to deal with the music, right? Well, we have street beefs that aren't even over street shit, which yeah. is weird, right? Look at Benny the Butcher and Freddie Gibbs. Two people that they're beefing, but we know they're genuine fans of each other's music. And Benny is out here running around with Freddie's ex, buying her a chain at events with her. And it's like, what part? Of, like, when did that become cool? Agreed. 50 Cent did that with Rick Ross. I think oh, that might have been the first yeah. time it yeah. happened. And then yeah. it just became standard. Like, you take somebody ex out and then treat her to dinner and shit. <laughs> you treat her to a steak dinner and walk her home like a gentleman. It pisses people off. Don't know why. <laughs> Fucking hate society, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that, I forgot about that. I forgot that Fifty did definitely do that. Yeah. Niggas is past <laughs> shooting each other. I'm gonna treat your. I'm gonna treat your baby mom and son with respect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna be a very cordial gentleman. Take that. <laughs> 
I do have a question though. Is in regards to um, and God, I'm trying to think of a way to word it where it doesn't come off sounding so uh, misogynistic. But like, and forgive me, people. In the contemplation of high end pussy, is it more or less that the name? is synonymous with fame because you'd then also be on that list or is it that these select four to five women that keep getting transformed are pro performers because i also come mm. out of the generation of superhead which was more if anyone who is familiar with the past history it was more of about a talent base than anything else because yeah. she smashed in secrecy right so you know what i'm saying it was more or less like she is the best performer and like it's a treat and a taboo thing because everyone is doing it behind closed doors opposed to where it's like no, I want to be with the same chick that's banged like the entire starting like cover because then I will be in that same company. If that makes any sense, that's what I'm trying to figure out what the appeal is behind that. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I I feel like I'll find out once I get some money though. Fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, don't turn your don't don't you hate that what? when the whole try to turn her life around when when she get with you. <laughs> That that doesn't. I'm a good man, and that doesn't happen to me. Like, come on, man. Like, come on. <laughs> I don't even know you found Jesus about. when? Right. <laughs> what you mean? Now, now you now niggas gotta take you out. <laughs> All right, I won't speak on that. I won't speak on that, but I will say, like, you ever get that, like, and then you start trying to be like disrespectful after, so she just think you one of them other niggas. <laughs> like, wait, no, 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 look, 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 look hold up, hold up, hold up. I can call you a bitch. I can slap you. Hey, we don't gotta. I don't gotta pay for dinner. Yo, <laughs> yo, that shit is crazy. I can be an asshole. Hey, Just give man. me a chance. No, the shit, the shit is the worst when you find out. Like when you find out after the fact. It's when everyone else is smiling, nah, we're you know treating a woman with respect. <laughs> but like, if you was doing that just to fuck, then yeah, that's silly. Nah. Like if you was like, you know what, my friends was wrong. <laughs> 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 Let's go to Taco Bell. Bro, back in the day, they called that, that courting. All right? Yeah, it was courtship. Yeah. You were a gentleman for doing so. Uh. <laughs> well, also, you got to think. I think about this, too. We're like, sometimes women women don't come like all the time when they fucking. Because, like, guys don't always care. So, like, you might unlock a new level of a person. Just based on like your experience, like mm. like if you if, if all, five of your homies fuck and everybody just fucked for like five minutes and then walked out, yeah. like sure that's cool. But what if y'all just like like what if you find out how to make her squirt? Now you gotta give it up because your homies ain't fuck with her like that. You feel me? Like no, I agree with that. And actually, I've known several of these situations like, who turned oh, into shit, happy marriages. Like you like oh shit you you made her squirt right and they're like no and then you know you not a pussy for taking her to dinner because she squirt. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Bro, no marriages I'm, that have worked out from this scenario. By the way, I'm just saying, hypothetically, like, no, but these that, are all things that... No, but that is how hoes get waxed, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, when you find out how nasty they are, I can't have you out here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't have you out here in these streets knowing you do anal. Yo. <laughs> I know some retired hoes where, like, it's like a... It really is like a story <laughs> happily yeah, ever okay. after. Um, nah man you see the retired hoes and it's a happily ever after like yeah man i moved up to connecticut yeah i won't put my man online but you know what i'm saying because i ain't trying to disrespect him which yo as an answer i respect yeah like, what like if i'm not trying to embarrass him? nobody so i'm not putting him up there but yeah man i'm ha- i'm living heavily at happily ever after and you know for a fact that like <laughs> yo there's nothing wrong with hoes like some niggas only like hoes because like regular girls just sometimes are you know a bit too uh reserved yeah, I'm not trying so to hear you, about your day. Yeah, like if you if you fuck with hoes a lot, it makes sense for you to end up marrying a hoe and moving to fucking uh, Topeka, Kansas. Yeah, because your whole <laughs> clock resets at that point. Yeah. You're not a hoe in Topeka, Kansas. No, that's that's. I'm once again, I know entire relationships built on this exact model. Because you get what you want out of it, but the only thing is like, I don't know, man. Social media is not for you kind of people, though. Uh, but um, yeah, there's nothing. This is a, this is a pro hoe. Yeah. No, this is definitely a pro whole podcast. You can fuck a one person, you can fuck a hundred people. We're not gonna judge you. Mm-mm. We just gonna maybe make you drink out of a different cup. <laughs> or slide in your DMs. It really does depend on the situation. <laughs> no. No, but um We're gonna make you do a mouth swab <laughs> before we let you use our silverware. Oh uh, but <laughs> smoke joints to the head, we just pass it. You can keep that. That's yeah. fine. No, but Yeah, but, smoking with a hoe is dangerous. Playing with fire. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but, but before we get out of music, though, I did want to talk about one more thing in music. And I wanted to give a shout out to Glorilla, man. I want to give a shout out to Mrs. Moose Knuckle. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love I love Glorilla, man. And um, recently, so she was facing some backlash over using the R word in a new song, right? But then, after facing like after hearing the criticism, she changed it. She changed it, and I, I want to play. I'm gonna play both versions of this snippet. So that's the original version of it. Now this is the version that she changed it to. You say go naughty? What I think say? gnarly. Gnarly. I don't yeah. know. Memphis ain't English. <laughs> no, but sit in Memphis. I I I love that. I yeah. love that she did that for so many reasons. It's called writing, dude. Right, it, bro. That exactly the craft. These these rappers they don't care about the craft no more. Before, so my dad he has like a real extensive vinyl collection, right? And when you buy vinyl, it used to be four versions of the song. It used to be the clean version, the explicit version, the acapella, and the instrumental. And even with albums, you know, when you used to buy a CD, the clean version, the explicit version. And the songs would be totally different. The songs would be, like, it would be completely different hooks, completely different verses. Where now, shit, they just bleeping it out. And I guess the one that, that we get that was different was on WAP. Where like with the radio version of that was like wet and gushy, but for the most part, these rappers aren't really cleaning lyrics up. They just they'll just bleep out the whole song before they go write another verse. Yeah, it's kind of like this shit is lazy. It's really it's really lazy, and I feel like I would only support not making a clean version of a song if the like content of the song would be changed like if you was talking about some like heavy shit like yo there's a personal story in my life and i right. don't want to censor it like or like if you had a political message you know how like punk music was like you know hey kids listen to this movie music you know fuck your parents fuck the government you know what i'm saying don't let them tell you what to do like you don't want to censor that because the, the anger is in the, the cussing right but like i was well, i was saying sexual eruption versus sensual seduction it's the same message, but one just sounds a lot less fucking weird. And sometimes the clean version is better than the explicit version. When you have like Shorty is a ten. What was the what? Shorty is the shit? Oh yeah, that shit. That shit. I remember, that, I remember the first time I heard the 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 um the uncensored version, and I was just like, "What the fuck is this bullshit?" That, people were mad at Glorilla for cleaning up the lyrics. Because they saying people are being sensitive. And I hate that just because it's like... Narratives. I don't like when people make apologies or like they give statements on a group that they're not a part of. Mm -hmm. So with people, they didn't like her changing the lyrics because they were saying it's not, it's not that offensive, it's not that serious. Whereas like you're not somebody that's faced with an intellectual disability. So I appreciate, uh, you know, I definitely appreciate Gorilla uh, making this change. Also, oh shit, this week also too. Um, you saw Keith Lee? He visited the DMV. I did not see that. Yeah, he was getting a lot of backlash from that. People were upset about <laughs> shit. It was one rapper that said, "He said next time Keith Lee come out here, I'm gonna review his life." <laughs> <laughs> it's like goddamn nigga over wings over lemon pepper yeah they was mad that he was saying um food in dc was nasty but you know i got i actually i talked about this a while ago about i wasn't really happy about my dc trip and i'm sure it is good food in dc like you know it's good food everywhere but just in the more tourist spots i mean you know you're going to get bad food when you see grass walls and neon lights. So... Yeah, I don't even go to... Last time I went to a place like that, I was really upset that I was brought there. Yeah, like, so that that's one thing. But then also, too, you know, Keith Lee, he is allergic to seafood. Hmm. So it's like, you going to food, you going to go get food in the DMV. It's kind of not the place. It's kind of, it's not the place. Like, you know, that's what they specialize in. Yeah, crabs yeah. and, you know, all of that. But then, it just the conversations around it is so unhealthy. Whereas, like, people are placing too much power 
and a nigga that eats food in his front seat. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 people are saying, uh, Hold people, people are saying his pilot is is basic. It's like, yo, would would you expect him to eat the filet mignon in the parking lot? Like, I'm not, I'm not expecting much out of him. I'm not, and, and you know, even if his pilot is basic, right? A restaurant still got to get the basic right. I think people need to understand that they they don't really got like developed palates anyway. Like you niggas eat Burger King and you gonna take a Keith Lee review on something like oh I'm not gonna eat there. Oh, oh okay. He said he said that the flavors don't uh um the flavors don't uh you know sync up properly or whatever the fuck food niggas say. Like you gonna take their advice and not go to a restaurant and then still go to fucking like a McDonald's drive through and shit. I mean, I hope Keith Lee say, "Oh, my favorite food spots is nasty." I don't need y'all. I don't need y'all niggas showing up, making it hard for me to get the food that I enjoy and that I've been enjoying. I wish somebody would review my comedy and be like, "Nigga, close down." <laughs> like, I wish somebody would just tell me, like, "Look, I'm a UFC fighter. I've had a lot of comedy. Quit." And I'll be like, "All right, cool." They need to take this. As a business is an investment. If you get somebody telling you, "Look, you ain't gonna make it." Take their advice and just you know go into a different endeavor. Yeah. It's so fucking uh, sweaters for dogs. Uh, but yeah, they they play some way too much. Damn, Keith Lee only twenty seven. Yeah, this nigga don't know shit. <laughs> Who the fuck is he? <laughs> Palette's not even developed. Don't right. even know good food yet. Yeah, his taste buds aren't even fully settled. Yo, that's true because I used to hate tomatoes. Yeah, the same. Now I need tomatoes. Fucking tomatoes sandwich. up, yeah, bro. I'll be fucking tomatoes up, right? Yeah, so. It's like it's a bunch of things I like that I didn't even realize I like. Yeah, I just started sucking toes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't like that shit. Most people feel that way about like broccoli. <laughs> Let's get to know that toes are your thing. I like I like different vegetables these days that I used to not. Yeah, I like carrots. I like fucking um, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts a lot. Like that's some shit that I recently got into. So to be twenty seven, reviewing reviewing food. food. No, you need to go through some shit. Like you should, he should be allowed to do it. But like, like, who are these people that are like, oh well, if he says it's not good, then I don't think it's gonna be good. I do yeah. think though that the point of you were making about as far as people going nuts, because do remember, yes, he has been. His whole thing was he was picking out struggling <coughs> places. If they were good, he was basically giving them life again. You know, there's a lot of places that did, and then you look at the crowd he drums up now, and that's all positive. But there is an extent where I do think that people are taking like. Like, the lady that we spoke about a couple weeks back that was willing to <laughs> self because of the Keith Lee review. Now we got, like, local rappers putting hits out on Keith Lee over, like, what? What was it that he didn't enjoy so much that's about to get him shot in that's the lower D.C. area? That's also a very shitty-ass threat. Like, he said, tell Keith Lee, show his location. When he come back, I'm going to review his life. That's like a mom threat. Yeah. I seen the mom in public where the kid was like, Mom, can I get some orange juice? And she was like, I'll give you an orange ass whooping. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the type of shit that he just said. That's pretty corny. Yeah. I, I'm going to review his life. I'm just saying, I think taking taking restaurant reviews from your right, some guy who doesn't have a, uh, what is the, and I know I'm going to show my ignorance because I know one word and not the other. Somebody who does wine for a living is sommelier. What is someone who just does food like critic for a living like? I'm not a fat sure. fuck. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying like, with the, okay, yeah. fair. Yeah. Sorry. But is there a traditional schooling the same way behind like being a, a real food critic? I don't know too yeah. much about being a real food critic. No. Nah. So, but my whole point is like, I don't know, a year ago before the pandemic, he was definitely just chilling at Sonic. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that it's worth taking a life over. But that's why we need mental health classes in high schools. Agreed. Because niggas are ready to kill people over a bad wing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if there's anything that the that the Popeye's chicken sandwich told us is that it could happen. <laughs> like <laughs> one day you could just snap over some food, uh, bro. Uh, I still think about that all the time. That somebody really got stabbed <laughs> over a Popeye's sandwich. Imagine having it to wasn't give that about service. the sandwich; it was about the principal. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that sermon. <laughs> it's like. It is a nigga doing time right now behind that. Yeah. Uh, we got to do better as a, as a people, man. 
<laughs> and we talking about rap. <laughs> rap is the problem. No. That's what I mean. <laughs> right. We talking about has hip hop primed the community? <laughs> Let's start with chicken first. <laughs> Diet and like the chemicals that we consume are way more harmful than anything else. Like you wouldn't kill somebody over a chicken sandwich if you had fresh roasted asparagus that yeah. morning. Yeah. And, and, and like a good smoothie and shit. <laughs> like nobody's die. Like if you hungry all day yeah. and like you looking forward to a chicken sandwich, that means you really don't got shit in your fridge. So somebody yeah. steps in front of you in line, you might stab them, and you don't mean it. You just hungry. Yeah, that bro, hunger. That's <sighs> no, that is the cause of a lot of problems. I'm also a Black Friday like OG survivor. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I I was there for the tickle me Elmo days, bro. <laughs> I seen what it was to watch someone get trampled for thirty dollars off of a forty two inch fat TV. <laughs> like, so I, I'm not gonna say that as a hundred. I do believe that consumerism is a problem in this country. For and, sure. like, that's really where it kind of stems from, but, I mean, but, yeah, I guess. But I feel like over food is, like, well, I mean, I don't know, maybe, like, the, like. What was the big thing behind it? That it was exclusive, there wasn't enough for everyone to go around, and it also happened to come at a time where people were sketchy amongst each other. So, like, kind of perfect storm type scenario for you to die over a chicken sandwich, which, by the way, I keep just thinking about the sermon and, like, what a pastor would have to say, bro, that shit has me dying. I don't know. You, yeah. We do got a few like like if I if you give me some food and some pussy you can hit me with a hammer like I don't give a fuck about that <laughs> dude like I, I'm pretty much good for the day anything yeah. can happen I'm like yeah, you know what everything's good yeah. but yeah hungry people and like I don't know I don't know the I don't know the uh, psychology between behind like a uh, Black Friday shit I mean clearly you want to like uh, you want to be the fucking hero of the holiday and shit or maybe you just need a TV that bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Damn, you never went to Black Friday shopping? Man, you ever been Black Friday shopping? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my family I, didn't do that, and I I shop online. I don't go to yeah. stores um, unless it's like a specific store. I, I, I've done Black Friday shopping, but not like the chaotic. Like now I do the new thing because, you know, the new thing is where. So, I mean, y'all know I live a different lifestyle now. So I'm not that person I was years ago. My Thanksgiving dinner is done early. So I go shopping after like a plate or two Thanksgiving day. So I go shopping on Thursdays now. Hmm. Wait. Yeah. So Black Friday is some stores be Friday, open, but but the, but the sales most Black Friday sales start on Thursday. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, they they try to hide it from niggas. <laughs> they try to hide it from. They did us. a good job. <laughs> yeah, but you could go to a Target or a Best Buy around like six p.m. on a Thursday night. You get the you get that nice you get some good shopping yeah. in without having to bump into other people because at that, that time niggas is still waiting to set the turkey out. So that's why at you, that time I'm taking a shower. So. <laughs> Nobody showed up yet. I'm in the shower. Yeah, me. I'm already I'm already a few plates in. So at that point, you know, I, I have a nice Caucasian. Is it's still the food still has the the essence of blackness because my mother's making it, but we just do it on a Caucasian schedule. It's a better schedule. <laughs> Damn right, better schedule. I, I'm, <laughs> I really, I really am yeah. tired of the fact that every black gathering uh, accounts for the fact that niggas are going to be late. One hundred percent. Like we, everything is like all right. So we said six o'clock. So we could probably start cooking around eight. Like, look, this episode, when is this episode is coming out? If you listen to this today, it's September September 3rd. You know Thanksgiving is coming. Mm-hmm. Be ready, y'all. Mm-hmm. Damn, what we got? <laughs> be ready. Y'all got, y'all got more than two months to prepare. So, yeah, be ready. There's no reason. I hate that shit. I hate that dinner. is. Y'all, Thanksgiving comes the same day every year, and y'all still be late. Man. What yeah, time? I, don't, I don't know. I what, mean, it's just... What time y'all had Thanksgiving, Max? Uh, depends on whose crib I go to, but yeah. if it's my side, by like four or five. Okay. Maybe three if I could like get into the kitchen while she's still cooking. Like I'll just try to eat early. That's good. But if I go to my in-laws, it really does depend because my mother-in-law gets busy on fucking Thanksgiving, bro. So, I don't know. I'd say about six, seven, okay. depending on the amount of people that are coming. Like, do you she's busy, contribute busy. dishes at all? What do you mean? Do, do I like, like? Do I do the dishes? Yeah, you like, I do the no, dishes. like cook anything? 
No, bro, I can't cook. Uh, yeah. Do you? No, no, no. no. We got to start. I think, like, because one, then there's more food, but we all, younger men, I was us, like, we got to contribute in the uh, actually, the festivity and the joy of do feeding other people. Hot shit. I don't wanna no, sh- nigga, like, yeah. I mean, like, feeding, like, like food, yeah. I don't like wanna, we can all buy yeah. shit. That's how that's our cop out. No, you think I need to make artisanal bread? Yes. No, but why? We, we actually we for the pie. I'm gonna have for some, the joy of it. We gonna have something here for Thanksgiving. Oh, bet. Yeah. Well, me, you, and him. Yeah, we are gonna have Thanksgiving. Wait, but who's cooking? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna contribute. Oh, all right, cool. No, I just I thought yeah. you were basically saying like it's up to us three. We're gonna have a thing. I'm about to say, yo, bro. I'm <laughs> no, 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 no. You no. ever have chopped meat with rice and hot sauce? This shit is good. <laughs> like it's not gonna be yeah. a turkey. Yeah. No, but we um we gonna we gonna have a little something here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so I take back all that shit I said about cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't bringing y'all shit. <laughs> nah, actually, yeah. I would bring some. I'd, what do you all? What do y'all not like making? Let's um, plan this out now. So if you're on this white schedule. Um. No. No. We. We. No. It don't matter what you bring. Just um. That's because that's what you say to somebody you don't believe in. <laughs> it don't matter. Yeah. Just bring. Just bring brownies. Thank you for that energy, bro. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You think I'm a, I can't cook, bro. That's my biggest thing, man. That's my biggest thing at home, too. Like, I do everything. I just can't cook. That's not me. I grew up with mad women in my family, so I was always, uh, like, catered to in that aspect. And there yeah. was always somebody to cook. Yeah. So it was never something that was, like, a priority for me to learn. Yeah, I, I never really had to know how to cook. I just, I like it, you know. Um, once bro. you once you start getting your own money and you can make your own food, it becomes fun, you know, for me. I don't know. Yeah, my son goes to culinary school. I'm telling you, bro, like, I get the idea of people, especially for men, like, who love to cook. And I think it's a great thing, but it's just not my thing, bro. Like, yeah. I'm just, I don't have patience for it. Yeah, yeah that's I don't have, thing. like, a, a refined palate. Like, our dead ass will eat rice, chopped meat with hot sauce. Like, that's a legitimate good meal to me. Yeah. But. I like that. I like <laughs> eating shit that's, like, quick and cheap. No, nah, my wife that. calls it jail food. She's like, like you eat jail food. food. No, yeah, I like no, jail no, food. I like jail the, food. The way you de- just described it to me, I was definitely going to say that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely, I was definitely going to say it sounds like a little struggle. And um, <laughs> and, and I know just to make it good, yeah. he cuts it up with a metro card. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <laughs> make it authentic. Bro, you never had to like fry oodles and noodles and like really make yourself like some lo mein. <laughs> Just, I don't think no. I've done that, but I might. So he yeah. can get that authentic feel. He looks over his shoulder <laughs> every bite. I don't make a bowl. I just pour everything into folded up tin foil, and I just sit there and eat it. Yeah, bro, it's good. You take a shit and leave the door open. <laughs> just get the authenticity of it. And see, it's jokes like that. Why I won't learn to cook either, right? Because I won't be able to get through the trial and error part. Yeah, patience is definitely a part of cooking. I. I've learned patience over time. I don't think I've ever had patience up until like a year ago, two years ago, or some shit. Uh, shit. But, um, I don't know. Did y'all have anything else before we get into the movie? Oh, if you in New Jersey, watch out. The West Nile virus is out there coming to get you. It's in Brooklyn, oh, too. They're spraying what? all across Brooklyn, too. How you get that? That's mosquitoes, right? Mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh, shit. Mosquito definitely just... Damn. Uh, Cough in that direction. Point. What's now? I mean, so I'm guessing, that, did that originate in Africa because of the Nile? No, no, no yep, Uganda. Oh, okay, uh, so <laughs> Uganda. It, did come, it did come from Africa. An infected no. bird and then bites a person. Damn. Mosquitoes no. got to get their shit together. No, I was wondering because, I don't know, I just do feel like it's a lot of, they try to scare us more about the stuff that does come from Africa. Yeah, I mean, they want you to scary. think Africa is a diseased, uh, barren wasteland, so they can continue sucking all the rest of the resources from it. And yeah. honestly, it's checking it. Yeah. Part of this may have started by an experiment in Africa, not uh, naturally in Africa, because that's how a lot of the diseases started with them experimenting, and then they kind of backfired. Yeah, uh, literally all of this shit that they say is like Africa is all the shit they say. The, all the things they say are bad about Africa usually are a consequence of something yeah. that was done mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by explorers and colonizers and imperialists. But, so it says it started in West Nile first started, well, it was first um, discovered in 1937. That was like, I guess, the first case in Uganda. But they say the first case in the U.S. was in 1999, which is, like, I'm, it, it's crazy. Like, you ever, you ever be on a plane and you see a fly? Like, and you be thinking, like, damn, this is a New York fly. This nigga don't even realize he about to land in L.A. 
No, like I never it. noticed that. That's <laughs> a weird observation. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like this fly. That's how shit could spread, though. Yeah, this fly is about to hit, though. Live a whole new life, mm-hmm. and he gotta adjust to a different time change. Imagine his first time seeing a bird that's not a pigeon. Yeah. Like that's see a the good West Coast movie. bird and that's freak a out. Pixar movie. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, Shot a, idea. A bug <laughs> on a plane. It's very, it's very, it's very uh, realistic, and yeah. it could, it could work. You know, yeah. you know, a New York, a New York, uh, fucking fly. I should. It's like, yo, what's good, son? <laughs> but like, then you get on the plane. And then all the other flies is like, what up, kid? And he's like, what the fuck is going on? So I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Where <laughs> your buildings at? Because <laughs> yeah. even, like, I remember being at the airport. And, I mean, I've seen this happen at a few airports. Where it's just birds flying around, trapped inside. Yes. And it's just something, like, really poetic about that and sad at the same time. Where it's like a bird trapped in this place where everybody else is flying. But it can't. Damn, that's mad deep. <laughs> okay, Edgar. I'm okay. <laughs> like, damn, bro. What do you think about the pigeons that get stuck on the A train? <laughs> like, you really got a whole story behind that too. Add like, in something about racism, and you got a Langston Hughes poem right there. Uh, that was deep as shit, dude. <laughs> God, what? Damn. That's what I was sitting there like, God damn, bro. <laughs> like, I never thought about that once in my fucking life. Damn. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, what's not virus? And, yeah. and you I'm know, a, um, I'm gonna have to call my dad and tell him I love him after that. <laughs> <laughs> I could be a flying Cali pop. I you don't my, understand. I, I call my dad every time a rapper dies. So <laughs> I don't want to make my dad sad by telling him this shit. That's why I was like, I'm not gonna tell him. I'm not gonna tell him who died. I'm like, well, oh, guess who died? And it's close to your age. But I'm also. Uh, that, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just call yeah. him. Like, what's up? How you doing? Oh, uh, that's gonna fuck my dad up, my, bro. Mine too. That's why I was like, yeah, I don't want to really. Yeah. Like Fat Man Scoop. I mean, as Crook much. Clan. Yeah, Crook as much Clan. as as much as I listen to the B nuts, that's like my dad shit right there. Fat Man Scoop was the equivalent of pulling a grenade in a party when you needed it to hit. As soon as you heard Fat Man Scoop fill in the following blank, yeah. that was you knew that was the party start. My teenage years right there. But, but I wish that was like still I feel like people get tired of those party starter songs. Like the song you hear at every function. Mm-hmm. I feel like people are tired of that shit nowadays. Yeah, but there's certain songs that it's like, yo, if you hate the song, you, it's you. Well it's not You're hate, but it's just like they like, like overdo it to the point where like because there's so much there's so I many songs, songs mm-hmm. that like Everybody doesn't. Ha- I don't think everybody has that. Like, this is the song I listen to all the time because there's so much new music and it's all. It's like we're oversaturated. So we're like, you hear a song for a month and you're like, all right, get over it, get get rid of that shit. We're over it. I like, guess not that's like fair. Us. Yeah, thirty and out. If this is the nineties, not like us, probably would have had another extra six months. Yeah, no, I got at um, least. Yeah, that is true. You know, on that note though, as far as your parents and like you're always getting to see someone age, something cool happened the other day, and like I don't know if there's any um. If there's any other Latino like listeners out there that have this, but they just put Celia Cruz on a quarter, and I know that sounds. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Where? What wait, country? Wait, who? Celia Cruz. She who was. Did? She was a Cuban American. Like she was a singer. Oh, okay. But like anyone from like my generation, like your grandmother was oh, into Celia Cruz. Like she, she was. On a quarter. Yeah. So wait, for I, for, for my grandmother this? to see, if my grandmother was alive to see this, bro, this would break heads. Like this would be something that they would take into. Like, whoa, Celia Cruz is on a quarter? Like, whoa. I don't know, man. I yeah. thought that was a bigger deal than what it was. My bad. No, no, no. My bad. <laughs> I, I, I wish, no, I wish I could appreciate and later Jesus came through for you. Yeah, yeah. that's all right, man. I She's appreciate the queen you. of salsa, but I don't listen yeah. to salsa music. So I would just, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you was the queen of, like, uh, astrophysics, <laughs> I'd be like, I never read none of the astrophysics. So even though you're the most important, like, I wouldn't know anybody. You feel me? Oh, uh, shit. But Shouts to Celia Cruz, guys. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, um, oh, it said cancer. I thought that was her astrological sign for a second. Yo. <laughs> no, that's how she died. They should rename, they should rename that, probably. <laughs> they should probably rename that. Uh. But um, dude, no. Before we got out of here, man, we we gonna get into <laughs> get into the two be <laughs> we gonna get into the two be movie of the week. This week, I hated this movie. Yeah, it wasn't good. We watched Will You Marry Me, 
And now that I'm watching these Tubi movies, right, I'm starting to really notice a cash grab or just, like, niggas doing something to say they doing it. This movie was just... It was just a drag. And you know what I realized? And it was only an hour and 20 minutes, too. That's what's crazy. Not even that. This movie was like an hour. It was like an hour 12. He hates it, that shit. Bro, this movie was like an hour 12. And this shit took me four hours to watch. <laughs> I, had, I had to take so many naps in between this. And the only thing that kept me entertained in this was Nia Lee and them draws. <laughs> bro. This, this, Shout out to Nia Lee. Yo, Nia Lee. We love you. Damn we right. love you. But this movie, I'm going to keep watching these movies you in to see that ass. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I got, I got, I got that, that was too real. <laughs> I, I no, I understand. It's not that we trying to be like, you know, objectifier or nothing. It's just there's nothing else good about the movie. But when she's being objectified, this movie like, this, like, I could watch the. I'm, I'm fine with watching this just with the sound off. Mm-hmm. But, so this movie stars Jamal Willard. Um, Gravy. Gravy played Biggie and Notorious. Not Nia Lee. Um, Nobody else she, knows. She's from Love and Hip Hop and also a DJ in the New York area. So I should kind of be careful about what I'm saying about this. No, oh, she was on she Love and Hip Hop? Yeah. I had no clue who she was before that movie we watched last time. I literally just fell out. I was like, yo, I just like who she is. No, yeah. That's what, I, that's what made me look her up. She was on Love and Hip Hop. And um, who else was in this? The guy that was in um, The Wire. Mm-hmm. Who? Oh, that was the kid that was in The Wire, wasn't it? Yeah. I was trying to figure out who the fuck who he Lito was. Who Lito McCullum. Whoa, yeah. Who's actually crazy. a very solid bro. He definitely uh, ha- holds a lot of things on Twitter. Oh, speaking of The Wire, we might have to watch that next. What? Better than my last. Oh, with the, um, oh that's with a good the cast. Dude, uh, you know, um, what's his name? He's been he's we, been we, we bay. Yeah, what's his real name? Oh, okay, and okay, yeah, we might watch this. Better than my last. Okay, we might watch it. But this movie. Why is this nigga's face on the po- poster twice? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> if you well, well, better than my last is the next movie we're gonna watch. So if you look it up and you see his face, you're like, what the fuck? That's him twice. Yeah. Oh, and that's Olivia from G Unit. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm definitely tuned in on this one. But um, will you marry me? Will you marry me is so bad that you'll get distracted by seeing just the poster of another movie. <laughs> <laughs> that- <laughs> and back to our review. Yeah. So. <laughs> nah, that, it was like it was no quotables. It was just. I w- so I watched this video this past week on Twitter where the South Park creators, they were talking about the making of a good script. They said when you read a script, you should be able to, every few like lines in the dialogue, you should be able to say but or therefore. So it should be, so you should read the script and you'll see an action and then but. So this happened, but then this happened. Therefore, this happened. Yeah, there's got to be consequences. Happened. Like, right. Asante went to the store to get some milk, but, but there was somebody robbing the store. Therefore, right. he saves the day and he, you know, wrestles yeah. a gun from somebody or some bullshit. But a movie drags when you're just saying, and, and then. So it's like, this happened, and this happened, and then this happened. Yeah, and like, then Asante this went to the store to get some milk, and then he went home, and then Nile jerked him off and then <laughs> and then somebody yeah. shot him and then he shot them and then somebody else got yeah. shot and then somebody else got jerked off and, and it's just like yeah and that was basically the essence of this movie yeah. it was just a bunch of in and then and and i'm cool with never seeing this again yeah i think i'm honestly fine with not never seeing jamal willard in the movie again he he's the same person it, in every movie. He's just like the disrespectful nigga. Yeah, you know this. This and is, matter of fact, and it's different. This is my impression of Jamal Willard. What you say, bitch? <laughs> That's his energy and his lines in every movie. And, <coughs> Fuck you, just say to me, bitch. And That's him, every movie. And don't know? get me wrong, I do like this one. I love a disrespectful nigga in yeah. the Tubi movie, but you know it gotta be a Denzel Dandridge. He's no Denzel. He's yeah, no Denzel. the list adds a lot of character. He's like. I don't fuck with none of you niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking kill all these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 
This uh, is an hour and 20. This is the thing with two week movies where you got to be careful. You see an hour, 12 minutes, hour, 20 minutes. You're like, oh, shit, that's good. That's short. I can get through this. But then you got to go, wait. That means they had to cut a lot of this shit. <laughs> Meaning whatever's left over is fucking awful. <laughs> Double-edged sword. So you got to be careful with these. Yeah. Um, They wrapped this movie up in such a way where they rushed it. Nothing. I, 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 I'm a, I got two parts. But you got any parts you want to play from this shit? No, but I will say I'm not going to give it away <laughs> what happens. Actually, this part of the movie like right here where he's looking at it it's so funny but like mm. in the end of a lot of these two movies they like reveal a bunch of shit at the very end yeah like in one scene where it's like if there was a fucking like if that was a callback to something that happened earlier it would have been a good script but the nigga will just say something like damn this is just like when it happened to me when i was 12 you're like nigga, you didn't just now bring it up your past like where was that the whole right. you're just fucking for an hour and now you want to talk about your childhood you feel me but yeah but, like, if they were to set that up, then it would tie it all together, you know? There's no uh, there's no continuity in some of these fucking things. Like, it, it, it happens in order, but there's no purpose for the order. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to play this one line right here. I thought it was going to be good at the beginning just from this. So, because it started off with regular to be disrespect, I thought it was going to be good. But that was kind of, like, the peak of the movie. I didn't notice that he <laughs> fucked her for $200. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> the market is. I know. Everything. Inflation is bad all over, man. Mm. This is why we got to get we gotta get Tim Waltz to clean up the streets. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I can't buy milk. I can't buy ass. No, I'm, I was, $200 is cheap. Oh, uh, where? Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you a big ball over Yo, here. Yo, <laughs> For real, bro. Where are you shopping at? I'm just saying like on the women's part. I'm not, I'm not buying. Bro, the going rate a few weeks ago... On an, a story that we were looking at was forty dollars. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What happened to the forty? What happened to forty bucks? I mean, like, I don't know. I, I, I've never. What happened to just bringing a bitch something to eat? That's <laughs> real. That's saying. my type of shit. Where it's like, <laughs> painful pussy is like going out to a restaurant. I got all the ingredients here. I can just make some shit. Yeah. I can go to the store and and get the one ingredient that I need left. So that that one, man. Um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't get better. It didn't really, like, I didn't know what was going on sometimes, and I was just like, when did this start happening? Who is this? Why did this happen? It, it was bad. It was really bad, and... It was one of the movies where you try to fuck. Like, you could try to fuck with a movie on in the background, but then you can get caught up. You're like, what? The, what? The, what the fuck is this again? Like, what's going on? It was really bad, and to see that, you know, somebody that was in the show as legendary at the as The Wire, this is what he's up to. Yeah. Um, well, if you in a if you a child actor in in a show like that, um, and we don't see you for a few years. I mean, matter of fact, I actually take that back. It is actually good to see. You know, a child actor in the Tubi movie because it could have took it could have went another route. No, I'm thinking he, like he should have went to law school with the money <laughs> instead of trying yeah. to act still. Oh, uh, because I was gonna say, you know, it is good to see him still healthy in acting mm -hmm. because the nigga could be sucking dick doing flat interviews. That ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think Orlando with Orlando Brown. Yeah. I think he set a bad precedent where it's just like as long as you're not doing that. <laughs> It seemed all right, but there's there's an in between, man. Nah, my man Julito <laughs> stay has he's busy. The standard, but nah, Julito stay yeah. busy because I, I I kept an eye on a couple of things he does. Yeah. He does a lot of sports stuff. You watched it? You ever watched the Hughleys? That might have been the old Hughley show. I might have been too young for that. Uh, because you got to see the the kid from that. Type in DJ Daniels. DJ, I think I know who you're talking about. That was the kid that was on the Hughleys. Now look oh, at him on Vlad. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Child actor turned. Oh yeah, blood. and he was in. He was on. He was in the movie Sky High on Disney. I remember that. Kid. I think he turned Holy into like shit. a gerbil. Yeah. Why? How do you? They need a better uh, vetting for gangs. Because how you let a child actor? <laughs> how you let like Chris Brown 
<laughs> and a child actor in you into a game. That's where the money's at, bro. What do you mean? That makes the most sense. <laughs> oh shit! They let anybody in these games. They let they let Arnez from one on one. That makes no sense. Like, <laughs> and 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 you gonna turn him into a, a monster? Like, if anything, let him like fund the endeavors and keep him clean. So that he can like keep making legal money to like yeah. launder. <laughs> this is why this is why I couldn't be a gang. Is I'd be too successful. Yeah, yeah for real, man. I, I would turn it into a LLC. <laughs> <laughs> real, somebody gotta take the minutes at the meetings. Yeah. But this shit, I'm gonna play this part. Yeah, you can't. You gonna come to the block without a pen and paper, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> come here, ready to work. <laughs> I'm gonna play this part right here. This is kind of at the end of the movie. Where, you know, he's in a situation where he know he isn't going to make it out. So, in the movie, he talks about Aaron Jr. But this is the first time that Aaron Jr. pops up. Yes. An hour and ten minutes into the movie. That part right there, your dad was a hero as he's about to go have a shootout with the cop. <laughs> this, can we give it away? Yeah. All right, so the end. So, <laughs> one brother goes out and has a shootout with the cops. And the other brother stays in the house and shoots himself. <laughs> I'd be so mad if I went out to protect you right. in a shootout and you just kill yourself. I'd be like, nigga, then go have them shoot you and I go upstairs in the bathtub and hide. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that was like <laughs> such a huge plot hole. Yeah, like, yeah. if they had an attic, you know what I'm saying? Like, if there was an attic in the house and or one brother's like, door. well, yeah, yeah, I'm saying, like, if, oh, you, I, I'm a, I want to die anyway. So, how about instead of you protecting me, m- being suicidal, I go out there, get shot, and give you a chance to get away. Like, it didn't make any sense at all. It was just, like, somebody read, like, the fucking last page of a Shakespeare play. Yeah. And they decided to recreate that shit. And this movie was actually directed by the guy who directed last week's movie. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think he might be from Jersey or New York. So, I'm not going to say nothing too bad about him. Because he might (laughs) chop people's fingers off with a chainsaw. (laughs) Seems like yeah. an Italian guy or whatever, but um, yeah, but um, I would say we we would we would have won something better next time. Yeah, yeah. So this movie actually, and I want to um, I actually want to shout out Lil Fizz. I think you might have finally met your match. <laughs> I think I think this movie, I think this movie has definitely it might have match Run Nixon for me because with as bad as I thought that was. I was still kind of engaged along the way, seeing how they were going to get their son back. Yeah. At least in the movie, like, Nixon ran, so there was, like, some sort of, like, the title made sense, and... I don't... Yeah. This, Will You Marry Me, it didn't make sense until literally the last minute of the movie. Yeah, yeah. It was just, like, this movie wasn't about marriage at all. (laughs) It was, like... I forgot that it was supposed to be about that. I think they, I think they just wanted to make a movie where people get shot, you know, <laughs> yeah. to sell drugs and make money. Like that was the whole thing. Yeah, but yeah. I want to see if I want to see if there's any reviews. I want to see if anybody's like, this is what <laughs> it's really like in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> like the niggas that leave reviews on these movies, like who has got a meth lab and an IMDb account. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this movie. Not really. I don't think I got anything negative to say about. No, no, I, I definitely don't have nothing bad to say about Nyla. Even if she did a bad job, she'd still be doing a good job. Yeah, she's the only reason I wanted to look at this movie. Yeah, as long, as, <laughs> see, and does I think that's where we kind of messed up at. I think we messed up by picking a movie horny instead, <laughs> instead of something to watch. <laughs> 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 it's kind of like when you go to the supermarket <laughs> but you but you hungry you didn't eat yet yeah. that's kind of like i think when we start picking out tubi movies we need to rub one out first no that's funny because <laughs> you get home you're like i don't even eat pop tarts you know what the fuck, <laughs> what the fuck am i doing with pop tarts but uh, it just no goes reviews. you you just wasn't thinking right this man. movie is an unfrosted pop tart <laughs> Uh, and this shit just came out. This shit just came out July seventeenth. 
This yeah, movie, it was seven point one out of ten, which is crazy ratings. that it had such a high fucking rating. It's it nuts. I mean, ratings. that's a lot of ratings for a two B movie, and to still get a seven point one. Three people gave it a ten. I wonder if there's any like reviews or if it's just like stars. Nah, no reviews. I checked already. Wait, wait. Can you that's go back all the niggas in the movie wanna, that gave it. Let me see. Probably. One person, it. one person gave it a five. Two people gave it a four. Wait, one, two, is the five people? Okay. That's the funny thing about this. I'm just now realizing like the three tens could be from people that were in the movie, right? But the fact that there's all these other two B movies where they don't do that is lazy as fuck. Like there's <laughs> all these movies that they could have like boosted the rating artificially. They just like fuck it. I already got paid. <laughs> <laughs> like, they don't even give a shit. Yeah, yeah, man. If y'all, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's other things on yeah. Tubi, right? They got yeah. some great documentaries. Yeah. Like, they have other movies on Tubi. You might see "Will You Marry Me." If you want to watch this, go ahead. Pepsi. Pepsi was so outraged by this movie, he just bounced. Yeah, Pepsi, he just, just kind of been dipped. <laughs> Pepsi was with us for two hours, but he had enough of this shit. Yeah, as soon as the Tubi movie came <laughs> on, he bounced and yeah. fucked up. They they in this area, and I perform out here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I fuck with y'all. I just like this wasn't yeah. the one, Chief. Yeah, like, that's that's, that's, that's what it. it is. I fuck with y'all as a as a unit. I mean, no, I fuck with y'all individually. I fuck with Jamal Willard as a person. I fuck with Nia Lee. Julito, I fuck with y'all individually. As a unit, this was a bad group project. Yeah, especially coming off, you know what it is? We watched Glow last week, and Glow was actually a very good movie. Yeah, we watched Glow. We watched, um, what else is Jamal Willard? And we watched a lot of stuff. We watched a lot of things yeah. with Jamal Willard. Jamal Willard has had some classic movies and classic lines. But, but this. And Tubi, like out of Tubi, he's had some great ones. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. I think he was in Watch It Back too. Yeah. Um, he's had some he had some great moments. Julito, you know we love him. But it's just this wasn't it for us. So yeah. He was the only kid in the last season of The Wire to like make something of himself. He wants to go lay down. The um, fact that he's opening the doors is what's fucking me up. Is that I know now what that noise is is Pepsi opening up doorknobs. Yeah. yeah. And now you don't hear it anymore. It's meaning that yeah, but he got in, down. I know. Because yeah. after he did that thing with the bathroom that day, I was like, Wow, you really can just unlock doors and like oh wow, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, animal evolution is definitely wild. Yeah, everybody worried about AI. You need to worry about your cockapoos and golden doodles. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it'd be times like when he get a haircut, he look like a little old man. <laughs> you treat him like a little baby. Yeah. yeah, he's one of those dog breeds that has like humanish eyes. Yeah. So like you patting him and you look in the eyes like. You know what the fuck you doing right now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm I'm your bitch right now. And you know it. Yeah, yeah that, that's uh that's it for that, this movie. I don't really got nothing else to say about it. Yeah, but um yeah, we definitely definitely appreciate y'all tuning in with us each and every week, man. Please um keep supporting us, support us uh, if you can. You know, like I said, drop five stars on Apple and Spotify. Follow the podcast page. Follow our own personal pages i have a show coming up in dc so if you're in the dc area support that asante is running a monthly show in brooklyn every last what every last yeah every Wednesday. fourth wednesday last wednesday i say but, fourth because there's sometimes it's the fifth you know so. but you know the date changes so just follow our personal pages to keep up with our show updates and if there's also any other cities that you want to see us perform in let us know let us know let us know where we should come to I guess it's been another good one, and we definitely will catch y'all back next week, man. I'm Anthony Moore. I'm Asante. I'm Maxwell. And we out of here.